hi everyone. We are hanging out <laughs> <laughs> on our Google Hangout. Um, I'm Joe Yonan. I'm the travel editor of the Washington Post. And with me are Zofia Smarts, the deputy travel editor, and Anne Farrar, photo editor. And we are here to talk about what you see behind you, <laughs> um, which is the winning photo in this year's annual reader travel photo contest. Um, and we are going to talk about everything else that was in the section that is going to come out um, tomorrow for those of you who have home delivery um, in your Sunday pack and um, on the newsstand. So um, we also just wanted to tell you a little bit about how the contest works. We had uh, more than 1,500 submissions. Um, we've been doing it for 15 years. and. Every year, we're sort of blown away by the vast uh, differences in the photography, from places to subject matter to style. Um, and this year was certainly no exception. We also are joined by our um, winning photographer um, who shot this gorgeous picture um, that you see behind us. It's Natalie Faye Green from um, Bethesda. Fantastic picture. And then our one of our two second place winners, Kathleen Weinheimer, who shot <laughs> this beauty right here, <laughs> will also uh, be joining us. But we're also happy to answer any questions that you might have. We have from Maria de la Guardia. We have, what are the main qualities that editors look for when selecting photographs for publication? Well, that is sort of the $64,000 question, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Um, so, well, I'm going to let maybe Zofia talk a little bit about that, and we can all weigh in, too. <laughs> qualities we look for. Well, every contest, as you know, um, includes an element of subjectivity. Um, <laughs> we look for beautiful photographs. We look for photographs with um, a special angle, a different take on a scene. Um, uh, we get lots of sunset photos, and a lot of them are beautiful, but they're, especially because we get so many sunset photos, the ones that we select have to have some unique element or some special way of being viewed, you know, special composition angle. Anne can talk about this better than I can. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I am curious. I do want to hear what Anne has to say. Absolutely. Um, when you initially look at pictures, it's almost a, a gut impact of does it take your breath away? Um, where do you look at in the picture, especially with our uh, winner, which is a really beautiful scene. Um, it was it was toned in black and white, which you would think, oh, well, maybe travel hmm, isn't so great in black and white. But the way this image came out in its simplicity and its um, beauty, it's really almost taken to another level in black and white. I'm wondering what it would look like in color, but by the fact that we did get it in this way, um, and the way it was toned, the photographer didn't go over the top in the clouds, didn't try to make the clouds something that they weren't perhaps there. It's really stark and elegant in the way it was um, captured, in the way that you don't have the entire house there as well. It kind of makes you wonder, what's the story behind this picture? And I think when we're looking for images and what's um, going to excite us in pictures is, where does that take me in my mind? Do I want to go there? Is it something that I can kind of bring a storyline and I can think about, oh, if I went to this place, you know, what could I encounter and what would I perceive and would it be exciting to take a step through that grass and find out what's on the other side of the hill? Maybe I, we should have Natalie talk about what yeah, she saw. Right? Sure. Sure. So what with this was. image, I saw it and I have to tell you that the day I saw it on was not um, my best day. I was traveling with two small children and my husband and we had kind of the difficulties that you have sometimes with small kids. Um, but we stepped out of the car and this is actually in the Oregon Inlet in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. 
and I saw this house from the parking lot and it just struck me as something that was so timeless that it could have been just like that 50 years ago and I loved the way that the dune and the clouds came together to make it so dynamic. Um, now my view wasn't great, I ended up having to climb up on like one of those little parking blocks and my kids were running around, one of them was wearing a hoodie for pants, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't the best day. Um, my husband was off trying to fish, it was cold, it was December, but this was just something that I felt like was a moment out of time. And actually that's what I've called the image, um, is out of time, because I feel like it was a moment out of time, and that's that's one reason I chose black and white. Um, I am primarily a black and white photographer. I love black and white because it is so timeless. Um, and in color, the image is interesting. I have it, it but it's not, it's not the same. It doesn't have the same, um, the same sense that time stopped. One of the things yeah. that I immediately struck me and, and we talked about, I think we all, all of us mentioned the word Wyatt um, mm -hmm. when we... <laughs> and imagine Christina, uh, you know, crawling <laughs> right. up that, that hill. And what's so interesting about that to me is that that's not a black and white painting. Um, right. And yet something about seeing this in black and white, I think, evoked a painterly um, mood uh -huh. more than if it had been in color, which is great. I also really love how the, um, the horizon of the dune lined up with the roof line of the house. Mm -hmm in that way that the house is just peeking over it. I thought that was maybe my favorite part um, to add to the mystery. Loved it. Um, okay, well let's look at another question real quick. Let's see. What is your stance on staged photos? Is it ever acceptable, and if so, under which circumstances? And that's an interesting question because in travel, one of the things that's easier about a lot of travel photography, I think, for people is the fact that landscapes don't necessarily move. So it's easier to shoot um, a, a vista um, than it is to shoot people who are unpredictable and are moving around everywhere. And certainly the photos that we get from our writers, uh, our freelance writers, um, who are not really professional photographers often, but uh, want to supply us with images from where they travel, I would say that it's much more likely that from them we'd get a decent shot of something really static than of something that has a very dynamic um, moving scene. Um, but we are journalists, so we don't want things to be set up staged um, in terms of um, faked at all. But there's also a difference between staged and a portrait. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah. we did have some really beautiful um, portraits that we liked. Can I just say? Um Last year's winner was a fantastic portrait of, yes. uh, of a, a young African native um, girl in I forget, Namibia, I believe in it Namibia. was. And yes. it was staged in the sense that um, the photographer was with a group of photographers who went to this village where the, the, the villagers do actually they pose for photographs. But we thought the quality of the photograph was so exceptional and so beautifully done that it still won the contest. And then this year we have two photos that we wondered about. Uh, this we one. wondered whether it was staged um, or not. Uh, the photographer hadn't said anything in his comments about that, but we decided whether it was staged or not, it was just beautiful. Really beautiful, beautifully done, even if posed. And so we um, we moved it up into the winners. Uh, turns out it was not staged. The photographer said he was walking down this mountain in Indonesia and happened to see this man and his horse and just took the shot and there it is and it's beautiful. And the other one was this one of the grandmother and her child in uh, Zimbabwe. Uh, it was posed, but again. I find it perfectly acceptable mm -hmm. to have a portrait. Mm -hmm. It yeah. gives a sense of place as well and the kind of people you may encounter where wherever you may be traveling. So if it feels like a portrait, I think it's fine to, if you call it staged or a portrait, whatever terminology you choose to use, I think it's completely acceptable for the travel, the travel section to have that. Yeah. I think a good example of something that we wouldn't have wanted to have been staged or would have probably penalized it would have been um, this photo. You can see here. Mm -hmm. 
which is a beach photo at um, while a storm was approaching, and the photographer caught, um, as everyone was sort of leaving the beach because of the impending storm, there was one sole intrepid uh, beach <laughs> lover who decided that he wasn't going to budge, and that's what we loved about that photo. Now, if we had found out or suspected that she had just gone out, he or she um, had just gone out to take the picture and had seen this storm and had told her son or daughter or husband um, or friend to go out there and put that chair in just the right spot and move it back and move it forth and move it to the side, you know, I don't think it would have been among our finalists. So that's an interesting uh, difference. So let's check another question here, and then I want to hear from our second place. How about this? What defines travel photography um, compared to other themes, categories, other styles of photography? Um, I think that's an excellent question. We actually found ourselves um, very frequently in the narrowing down of the photograph saying, I love that, but is it a travel photo? Um, if it's a butterfly in your backyard, it's yes. not a travel photo. That's not, that <laughs> trip wasn't far enough. <laughs> That's not a far enough trip. Yeah, you don't have Nor to go even, that far, but you have to go farther than your backyard. Yes. Or even the cherry blossoms <laughs> if you live in on Capitol Hill. That's still not a travel photo. It feels photo. like not a travel Sorry. photo. Yeah. There's a certain serendipity, I think, that even though we were just talking about um, portraits, um, there's still a certain serendipity, I think, that that comes with a travel photo. Um, even the, the photo from last year that Zofia was talking about, you know, they, they, it was serendipitous that they happened to see that woman um, on that trip. Um, so I think it evokes a strong sense of place, obviously, um, and it makes you want to go there. It makes you want to um, see it. Do you have other? When I'm looking for travel photos, I really am looking for something that makes me want to go or truly reflects the location without it being too um, confined or perfect. Sometimes, say, if I'm looking for a travel picture and I'm looking um, on, a, on a visitor's website or, or something like that, the pictures are almost, they are staged in a little bit too perfect. Too perfect. I, I, want, I want to have maybe that sense of imperfection, because life isn't perfect. And everywhere we go, nothing is really perfect. And I think um, imperfections are almost beautiful in their own right. So when I'm looking for travel pictures, maybe a sense of whimsy or a sense of um, something in the background that's happening that is completely unexpected is what I'm looking for. I think the swans is a good example of a photo where you might say, well, how is that a travel photo? It's just a bunch of swans on a river or whatever. But, um, but it's a site you'll only see in that place or maybe a handful of places mm -hmm. around the world. And it's, it's almost abstract. Mm -hmm. And the composition of the picture mm -hmm. is quite beautiful. It's almost like a painting. Mm -hmm. I would completely put that on my wall. It's a really gorgeous image that um, you don't see very often, and I think it struck us as unexpected and different. And speaking of paintings. Yeah, speaking of paintings, speaking of paintings let's not waste any more time. Yeah. Hello. Look at that. <laughs> that is just so gorgeous. Yeah. That oh, is thank you. Our, one of our two second place winners. Yeah. Um, and Kathleen is here to um, talk to us a little bit about it. I'm, I want to hear more about this place. Um, Kathleen, I understand that these trees are, are pretty dramatic there, um, but also, of course, want to hear more about how you got the shot. Mm -hmm. Well, basically, I was on a photo workshop, and one of the nice things about that is you get to go places earlier than things would be open, because there's a gate Oh, a couple of miles at the entrance to this area. So we had to wait for the gate to be open. So because we were in the workshop, they opened it up a little bit early for us so we could get there before dawn. And so after we walked there, as I said, just about everybody in the group decided to stop right there at the first set of trees and start setting up and taking pictures. And I kind of went, ah, I don't want to do that. You're t everybody's taking the same picture. So I walked all the way to the end of the beach and caught that beautiful picture. 
And the one thing about it is that there's a lot of trees that are now been bowled over and they're lying down. It's because of the erosion and the storms that have been coming in. And before long, there probably won't be any more trees after a couple of more heavy storms on the coast. So it's a um, once in a lifetime thing for me. I'd love to go back and try to take it at high tide when the trees would be in the water rather than the tides coming in. But uh, the sunrise there, I mean, I'm from Virginia Beach, so I love the ocean. I don't like getting up that early, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was well worth it, I think. So, but. Kathleen, did you, when you said you want to go back, could, mm -hmm. do you think you could find those trees again? It would be, oh. I'm just wondering if it would be interesting for you to try to capture that same scene. I tried. Erosion or slide and. Yeah, we went back a couple of days later after the workshop was over with, and we got them to get permission to open and up the gate early, so we were there before sunrise, and I took uh, my husband and my uh, and the uh, workshop photographer uh, lead to the exact same spot. The tides were different, the sun was different, the clouds was different, it just didn't have the same, you know, Wow. look as it did before. So, I mean, every time it'll look different. So, and that's one of the nice things about it. The, every time you'll go there, you'll, you will get a different picture. So. Wow. You captured this one. You yes. Know. Yeah. Thank you very it. much. I appreciate yeah. it. And that's something about travel photography that's great. If you take that extra step like you did, or you go those extra 20 feet or turn left instead of right, and you're going to find a totally different picture than someone else out there and something yeah. very unexpected. Also, sense of time when you're out there in the morning taking pictures, yes, you're a little sleepy, but the light is really yeah. glorious. And you'll notice yeah. in lots of travel photography and pictures, especially in this contest, the light is just amazing because people like you we're up at 5 a.m. and taking that extra walk in order to find the right. light and capture it perfectly. Yeah, and the one thing about me is I tend to be a butterfly. I just don't like to stay in one spot because there's too many beautiful things to take pictures <laughs> of, and so I just kind of roam around taking all sorts of pictures and everything. And so every once in a while, I get something good, and thank you very much for. You sure landed in the right spot this time. If yeah. that's not the most beautiful analogy for travel photography <laughs> that I've ever heard, the idea of a butterfly with a camera yeah. going around, I I love it. I love it. Yeah. Uh, and I think with that, um, we're gonna we're gonna say goodbye and thank you all for um, joining us for our hangout. Okay, well, um, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for um, your questions, and thanks to these two for such great photography. And we can't and wait. All our, to all our winners and on the yes, okay. all our finalists mm -hmm. and yeah, everyone good. who submitted. Thank you so much, and we can't wait to see what you guys come up with next year. <laughs>